God bless you guys. This is Sean here from Faith Banks Change. I just want to come on here and tell you, you know, I want to remind you, uh, and, and maybe I don't have to remind you, but I am for the sake of the Spirit, you know, uh, that you have enemies, just like David. You you have enemies, child of God. You have enemies that are plot that plot against you, and don't be afraid, but you need to be aware of things. Your enemies are not flesh and blood. They're, they're the uh, principalities and powers. They're demons, uh, spiritual wickedness in high places. And to pull them down, guys, you have to uh, you have to get that prayer closet that I'm telling you. Because David, read the Psalms. David was, you know, they were always gossiping about him. They were always plotting against him. So when you're praying the songs to God to protect you from your enemies plotting against you, what's happening behind scenes, the angels are setting traps for those demons and that witchcraft that you may not even know about that's plotting evil against you. And so it's important that you, you pray those psalms, that you, that you memorize them. Uh, there's some more stuff I want to go over to you with, with you, but I, but I wanted to uh, touch on that first. That uh, Make sure that you have a good, uh, that you have a prayer closet because none of us are any match for the devil or demons or sin, guys. That, that lust that you feel in your body, it'll only be gotten out of you. You can be forgiven of it. You can be forgiven of it, and, and your name can be written back in the book of life. But even though you're not acting in it, on it, you can have it still in your uh, that feeling in your flesh. Uh, they talked about uh, in hell testimonies that they would inject people. The, the devil would enter into that child of God or that person, that temple. He would inject them with a vaccine of resistance, so they uh, so they wouldn't be able to. They would have a hard time uh, getting out of that sin. They would always go back to it. I would. I used to bind up the vaccine of resistance, cast it to hell. I used to hear this thing called sticky glue. How whether uh, mostly it was upon a woman, a man going into uh, say say pornography, for instance. It's like that sticky glue of sin would stick to his private parts, and it, and and after he would repent, and it would be fine. It would be go away, but it would be aroused again later on. And it was like uh, that sticky glue is hard to get off, and you need fire. You need hot fire, hot water to get it off. And so when you pray those psalms, uh, you memorize them, you can keep hot water on you so that glue of that sin, that desire, will not stick to you. That's how, you know, I learned that, that you, this whole idea that you have to masturbate or you have to do any of the things that, uh, you know, the devil tries to tell us men and women that we have to do are, are not true because I got out of that. You know, I'm not doing that anymore. And, uh... And and you can get out of that, guys. But you have to uh, you have to memorize those psalms. But think about it, guys. If you knew for sure that those psalms were going to be what were going to get you out of sin, would you not do it? But you don't have faith to believe it will. But I'm telling you, the Bible says that. Uh, listen to the word of God. This book of the law shall not. Depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night. Then you, then you shall have success. That's the simplest form God God gave me, and Jesus prophesied to me. I was going to drive, dive deep in his word. That then you will have success when it doesn't depart out of your mouth. Other people have been wondering how to do that. I saw this guy, uh, Wayne Levi, a great channel, but, but he's wondering. He gets frustrated with himself. How do I keep my mind uh, focused on the Lord? I'll tell you how. You memorize the Psalms of David. You memorize prayers or whatever book you memorize, but I would say prayers because you have to seek God, you know. Yeshua said uh, your flesh is weak, you know. Your spirit truly is welling, your flesh is weak. So you need to pray, you know, so you get strength. And so uh, I would say that uh, memorize those Psalms. And if you do that, that's a key. That will keep your mind on the Lord. This book of the law then will not depart out of your mouth day and night because you'll be memorized it. You'll have it, you'll have it inside of you. You'll be walking it. You'll be praying it. And when it's memorized, they're not going to cause you to fall anymore because that will not, your mind won't be dripped into those voids. Yeshua talked to me about how there's great voids, you know, that when you're walking on the path, you may be forgiven. But the reason why you're not doing that sin anymore is because you're not, typically people are just not aroused by it. But if that, Thought comes from a void from the left or the right to uh, make you aroused. Do that thought comes in your mind again, you'll immediately turn off the path because you don't have that strength because your mind is not planted the Word of God. But if you learn to plant the Word of God all over you, uh, they, they talked about when they would pray in heaven, there would be like a jar and it would be like this, uh, this I think it was a greenish liquid or, or yellowish liquid. I think it was yellow, they said, uh, but it was oil and it would fill up the reservoir. And so immediately when you were attacked by uh, witchcraft or something, 
an angel of the Lord would immediately deploy and fight that battle for you, and you would not even know that you got saved for that battle. And when you did, that liquid would drain. And so you'd have to keep praying to have that liquid uh, go. And so, the, and so, guys, that's the reason why people have highs and they have lows, because they don't know how to maintain that oil in, of the anointing. And so to maintain that, you got to have a continual prayer life. Um, I wanted to read also this right here. Uh, God says, you know, there was some guy fighting me again about your your uh, your whole 2000, your whole, you know, October 27th thing didn't failed, you know. I shared with him the dream that I had. You know, he said, because you said basically you didn't say that it couldn't be stopped. Well, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I didn't think it could be stopped or thwarted. I, I, I thought it was going to be a done deal that God was going to do it. But like Jonah, but God didn't do it. Even though both of us, you know, I know just as I didn't have to be physically cast in a well to be cast in there spiritually to know it was a dream from God that he gave me. But I wondered why he didn't do it. But but this is what it says, uh, the clay and the potter, uh, chapter 18. Um uh, uh, verse 6, O house of Israel, can I not can I not do with you as this potter, saith the Lord? Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. In what instance I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning, he says at what instance, concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom, to pluck it up and to pull down and destroy it. If that nation against whom I pronounce turn from their evil, I will repent of the evil that I thought to do unto them. And at one instance I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to build and plant it. If it do evil in my sight, that it obey not my voice, then I will repent of the good where I said I would do, that I would benefit them. And so, guys, uh, God is saying that. You know, he, he has he reserved the right to that. He can, uh, when he sends a messenger or judgment, he can do that if he wants to. He can thwart something. But God also gets glory for himself. And later on, we, we know there's going to come a point where he's not going to thwart it anymore. And, you know, he did it 40 years later. He did it a calendar time. Uh, Nineveh judged them to point back to Nineveh's prophecy to, to show, you know, that God really did call him. But looking back, uh, how about 40 years before that? How about 20 years after? They would say, well, look at that old prophet Jonah. He didn't. Who was he? You know, he uh, his prophecy failed, but but it took, sometimes, guys, it takes uh, years, decades, sometimes God can fulfill something. Uh, sometimes it doesn't always happen like we think what's going to happen. Uh, you know, Abraham was told he was going to be, you know, basically a great nation, and that didn't really happen until he died, and after, you know, and Isaac came along, and it still took long. Uh But this thing I, I'm sure about, this whole, you know, I prophesied from the, the sixth, to the 22nd day, 622, and, and I happened to, didn't think about it in the dream, but, uh, you know, when I was in the dream, I was told 622 is going to be, uh, June 22 is going to be the time when things change, and I knew it was in the year 2027, and, and it was represented the two witnesses, and back then, I was thinking the three days of darkness happened now, the 27th, 28th, 29th, 30th, and then that represents 622, my preaching, it was always going to represent that. I just decided, like I said, to go back and look at the uh, the uh, Sahara dust cloud because that did happen. Uh, he told me I wasn't I wasn't trying to I'd never got a thought like that in my head. It just popped in my head Sahara dust cloud one day when I asked for uh, proof about these whole three days of darkness thing. It popped in my head Sahara dust cloud thing, and I ignored it. And it's like somebody is just pulling on me, trying to say pay attention to this, and I kept ignoring it. You know. And, and, you know, almost like an angel or somebody really talking to me on the inside, like my heart tugging, you know. And, 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 and it happened two days later and, and the Sahara dust cloud happened, uh, you know, I noticed it two days later, apparently it had been going on, but see, it didn't show up into the Caribbean, around the Caribbean, around the, uh, June 22nd. And God had already been giving me some prophecies about, there's 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 prophecies over the Caribbean. There's pirates of the Caribbean. There's some witchcraft stuff going on because there's uh, Satan is fighting for territory over there. But but yeah, uh, that's when I heard that. Uh, you know, June twenty June twenty two, and it related to that. And I was thinking before that was October. I was like, well, why would he give it me June twenty two? 
if it's going to happen three days of darkness, uh, if it's going to happen October 27th. But now looking back, I, I can see why, because later on I got that dream of the two witnesses and it relate, related to that. But I'm not saying uh, that for sure can happen because this chapter 18 of Jeremiah says he can thwart things. But I, now I do believe he's going to work. He's going to do something with those numbers. Uh, it's interesting also, you can times three times three times three, and it's actually 27. This is roughly kind of a, from now, about a, a three, a nine year period or so, you know, like that 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 29th year is over in 2030. I know that the Satanists, they have a 2030 agenda that says they want to destroy, they want to uh, set up their world government by then. I know they prophesied how they have, uh, you know, they prophesied around 2027. There was a TV show, actually, 2027. There was a, uh, goodness, they had in Digimon, Digital Monsters, they showed uh, these people fighting this evil, and then these children had a Digimon, which is basically a demon. They predicted they would all have demons in their house, basically. That's really what it is by the year 2027. They all live together in harmony. It's just fighting if that is going to happen for the two witnesses. That's just fighting that. And I suspect Satan has watched this number a long time. I suspect in 1827 or 1927, Satan saw that. Because as I later looked up, I found out Yeshua preached from uh, the year 27 to 30 AD. And he, looking at that number in the Bible, did see the 45th uh the 27th chapter, 45th verse of uh, there being outer darkness on the cross. He saw the number 27 in the Bible. The devil's not a fool. He he knows the uh, scriptures. He'd even talked about in the Bible, you can read places where it said, and there were 20 and 7,000, and it's related to the Bible when it talks about Elijah. And there were 21 and seven, 20 and 7,000 that fell that day. And there were 27 that this and that, and 20, and you can find that number all over. There's actually 27 books in the New Testament. I didn't know this. It, uh, Babylon the Great has fallen, or is fallen, is fallen, something like that. I believe it's a uh, Babylon the Great has fallen. It adds up to 227. It's just all over the Bible. You can't, you can't escape that number. God reserved that for something. There's a 22 uh, Psalm 22 about Yeshua saying, "My God, My God, why has thou forsaken me?" There's uh, that seven that has to do with the uh, seven spirits of God, and it's kind of co -mingled, it's mingled together about having to sacrifice yourself for the benefit of others, and there being the seven spirits of God that proclaiming that and everything. But uh, just get get you a prayer closet, guys. Get it's not that hard. I mean, a Psalms you you can memorize a Psalm. There's some Psalms, guys, that are like five verses. They're not hard. They're like five verses long. But if if you do, you need to do this. It may not be the most popular video for going. For, I'm I'm about to get off of here, but it may not be the most popular video to, to do. But it's it's for the benefit of your soul. So so you know memorize you the Psalms and uh, build a prayer closet, and and then the devil won't be able to stop you. But you you need to stay. Uh, you need to learn to to do what I I've learned to do. That just stay. Stay in continual prayer. Never come out of it, you know, for anything. Don't ever let any any offense or anything distract you. Just uh, always forgive. Keep forgiving. Keep showing mercy. You know, uh, forgiving. Sometimes you have to rebuke people, unfortunately, but you can keep forgiving. Don't carry, don't harbor anger in your heart. You know, there's a reason why God didn't keep the anger in his heart. I'm glad he's not angry in heaven. He took all the anger inside of him because... All that God is like a consuming fire. So he took all his heat, his great anger, he blew it into a place and that was hell. And so that fire is just what was inside of him. And he took it out. So he doesn't have that anger there. It's in it's in hell. It's another place. And so don't ca carry that with you guys. You know, spit out that anger or or blow that out that anger like God did, so to speak, you know, into hell. And and don't let it get on anybody else or anything. And and uh and uh, and and pray for them and everything and and but but sometimes for righteous sake righteousness sake you do have to you do have to take a stand for for God you know you have to sometimes because there's just um you know if if you let people uh 
if you just let people walk all over you, let the devil walk over you, then then he will get the upper hand and, and you'll give him uh you give him power over you. But but uh forgive everybody and everything. Just but we need to learn how to have the Bible says that the kingdom of God suffers the violence and the violent take it by force. And so there's a there's a holy kind of uh, violence that getting violent with the promises of God, you know, uh, you know, putting on the prayer closet and praying and praying like that. You listen to some of the ways David prayed. It wasn't always didn't always seem pleasant, but those Psalms. But, you know, there's a lot of power in those things. But I love you guys. I'm going to let you go. Anyways, I just wanted to share with you that, uh, you know, that little piece of uh, information just keep yourself in prayer and everything and and you have enemies and and remember remember to just be on your guard you know and and stand your ground in the lord i love you guys uh, repent for the day the lord is at hand until next time shalom